I'm Liz Pagel. I run the consumer lending business for TransUnion. So I spend most of my time working with fintechs, buy now, pay later lenders, a um, whole host of different innovators in the space. Cash flow underwriting is a topic that we can't have a single conversation without it coming up. Um, it is certainly the bright, shiny object, I think, of the underwriting of the future. Um, and I want to spend a little time with um, my panelists today discussing where it's going, um, where, what's next in the innovation, um, and how we can all kind of learn to take this to the next step. Um, so I'll let my panelists introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Rickard Bandabo. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Vantage School, and uh, you know, we are the um, most inclusive and uh, um, credit score out there, and obviously I'm delighted to be here. Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Gali. I head payments partnerships for Klarna globally, um, which means also working with partners who can help provide us cash flow data. Great. Well, I want to start off asking both of you why you're on the stage. So what, is, what are you and your company doing when it comes to cash flow data that is interesting, and why have you chosen to invest time and effort in this? We'll start with... I think many people can understand that the information that's stored on a credit file, it's obviously, it is very helpful. And without a doubt, it is predictive of a huge portion of the population as to how well they will perform with future financial products. But it's not, it's not everything, right? It is a slither of all the information to fully understand a person's financial um, capabilities. And so, and also, there are tens of millions of, of, uh, of uh, people out there and the consumers in the United States who don't have any bad information on their credit file, for instance, but there just isn't enough history or good information there for them to be able to qualify for a lot of other products. So we've been keen to look at different ways of alternative data to be able to um, score and be able to enable far more people to have access to products they didn't have access to before or much better pricing for those products that they haven't had before. Yes, sure. And for us, it's really the strengthening our models. So our models are the key for our underwriting. Uh, we do tailored underwriting in real time at the point of transaction, not just when someone applies for like a credit card or when they're asking for a line increase, right? Like more traditional lenders out there. Our, trans our decisioning is at the time of transaction, it needs to be super fast, but yet you want to get it right. Um, the more data that we can use to train our models to understand who our customer is, uh, the better it is. We even uh, look in real time at characteristics in order to decide how much of the credit file to pull for, for a decision. So this will just make our decisioning and the way we go about it and how much of the file to use that's much more sophisticated and hopefully get it right more times. Yeah, I mean, I think all of us and all the discussions I have, the more data, the better. And can we take in as many data assets as possible into our models to understand ability and willingness to pay and kind of need all of that to get a full picture of the consumer? Um, next question is, what value have you seen that this cash flow data brings above and beyond the additional credit data? And I'm interested in both the value it brings to the lender and to the consumer. I can start with that one. I mean, on a, on a lender's perspective, um, it has a, tr a massive lift on the predictiveness of the model. So you know, we, we've seen our own, in our own data over 10% lift. We had some lenders um, see 20% um, in the range of 20% predictive lift. That's a big deal. <laughs> that's not a small amount of lift that, you know, and so that's, I think, a very big thing for them. The other thing I see, with, which I think is both a benefit for lenders and for obviously individuals, is um, that they are able to um, sell to more consumers. They're able to provide product to more consumers. And obviously, from a consumer's perspective, it therefore enables, if you wouldn't have had access, to have access to those products. But I think the other key thing, just to mention on this one benefit too, is that at least in the scenarios which we're working and the pilots that we're doing with some very large financial institutions today, it's the choice of the consumer. So let's, you know, we are using this as a consumer-permissioned 
uh, tool rather than something which they wouldn't necessarily have any control over. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. I think where it comes mostly into play is in those thin file cases where it's not necessarily that the customer has bad credit, it's just that they don't, there is not enough information on them and sometimes it ends up being working to their detriment or preventing them from getting approved for a certain type of product. So we do think that in those cases it will be very beneficial. We also think that it would be very valuable in helping us weed out the false positives. Um, we've all, as a consumer, I feel like been in a position where sometimes a decision was made. It's not the decision that we was hoping f we were hoping for, and we were trying to understand better what was driving it. I feel like cash flow data, especially if the consumer permissioned it, uh, can help the customer feel like okay, they've, you know, they've really brought forth everything that uh, they can about themselves to help the lender make a better decision. Yeah, and I think that's key too. As we think about enabling this for lenders, there is that friction, right? That you still have to provide a password, permission yourself into the account. But if you can really see the lender sees a real benefit, they can pass that benefit on to the consumer. And I think that's been kind of an unlock for us is how to help the lenders think about the value that this, or help the lenders provide to the consumer additional value. So if the consumer would have otherwise seen a turn down, and by going through that extra effort, remembering their password, typing it in, could potentially get them an approval. If they could potentially get a couple of basis points, better rate. Um, if they could potentially get a larger loan. Like the consumer really has to understand that benefit in order to go through the motions of permissioning. Uh, but it's real, like you said, the numbers are real. <laughs> No, they're very good. I mean, an another thing that we, th we have seen is that I think it's a consumer journey when it comes to this type of provisioning of data. And um, so we're trying to be cautious and, again, ensure that consumers feel like they're in control. And so what we mean by that is that as we do this, for instance, if with our um, consumer permission data model, um, when the consumer is asked to permission this data, it would, it's only going to be used one time for that one transaction with that one lender. So if they're a little bit unsure, at least they don't feel this apprehension that this might be something that will let, you know, oh my God, there might be something bad that happens and then that's gonna affect um, another loan, that I'm, uh, this auto loan I wanna do in a month from now or a mortgage I'm gonna do three years from now. But if they see the positive benefits of it, then obviously then they can see like, oh, actually this worked well for this, um, uh, this personal loan I just for applied for. Um, if I get this option again for a credit card or for an auto loan, I'm now gonna be much more encouraged because I saw that I got better terms or I was able to get a product. And I think it'll take some time for the consumer to get used to that. And maybe this begins as the permissioning for one loan transaction, but it gets us further and further towards a world where we could have perpetual access to cash flow data for consumers. Um, how big of a win is this for financial inclusion? I think it's certainly a big win, especially, like I said, for those customers that are thin files and, and couldn't participate to the extent that um, all the lenders out there, I believe, would have wanted simply because there is no information and so there is a heightened degree of nervousness to, to kind of do business with these customers. Um, so I definitely think that uh, it's a clear win in that space. Uh, when it comes to other use cases, honestly, I feel like the jury is still out. Um, I feel like the more customers develop comfort in using this and the richer data that lenders will, you know, avail themselves of through these processes, I think ultimately it can also lead to lenders becoming more comfortable going, you know, further down um, the score bands and developing a slightly risker, um, sorry, slightly richer or, you know, more expanded risk appetite. Um, but I think that will take time. I think there's also a lot more potential. You know, when we look at consumer permission bank data, obviously the immediate things that come to mind that most people are thinking about are things, you know, like, do you see any bounce checks? Do you see that that person's account is, is increasing over time or decreasing over time? Um, does their income look, you know, um, consistent or, or is it very volatile? Um, but you can actually get a lot more out of it out from that data. And, and there's several 
really great startups that have been looking at this already. They've been able to do things like identify if something is a utility payment or a rental payment. Um, and I think that you know, beyond using this data just to make a one-off decision, there's gonna be opportunities in the future where consumers could even have some of that data then appended to their file. So for instance, when, if I'm permissioning you, yes, you can use my cash flow data for this transaction, but oh, guess what? Maybe there's an option for me to be able to also have my rental data now included on my, on my, on my file, or my utility data included on my file, because we know that those are, there, there's room for them on the credit file, but the provisioning of the data isn't fantastic. So if a consumer can have more control of that um, and it's easy for them to do so, I think that's another big step forward with this type of data. Easy for them and they see benefit in, in doing so. I think that's, that's huge. You gotta give them something in return. And I think TransUnion has seen a lot of value in these data and we've built uh, a bunch of cash flow attributes with our partner MX and we are um, starting with income. So, okay, hey, can we verify income? Okay, that's like the first level of detail and then keep going down. Now can we think about balances and balance trends over time and cash flows in and out and eventually you can get to like an ability to pay calculation. Um, so there's so many different levels of depth that you can get to. Um, and I think we're just at the very beginning of understanding that. That said, it's not easy. So you're <laughs> both pioneering in this space through your companies. Um, talk to me about what needs to happen for this to become more mainstream and more um, accepted across industries and across consumers. I'll start with the consumer because I think that's obvious. It's key that consumers um, are getting transparency from us, uh, not only with respect to what data is being used, but how it's being used. The greater uh, transparency that we give, the more comfort people will develop with, with providing that information. And, you know, if they see a clear benefit to your point, uh, then that would be key. I think if we, if we will have uneven practices as far as transparency from, you know, the variety of lenders out there that are going to be using this data, um, that's going to get um, consumers to feel perhaps not as trusting and, and not as confident in, in using or, or availing that data for lenders. And Ricard, Vantage Score is a very trusted name in lending. To what does this industry need to make this more mainstream, and what role does Vantage Score play? You know, obviously, we're building our you know um, models to be to work across all three um, of the, the bureaus, including obviously TransUnion. Um, I, I think again, you know, we need to make sure that there are no unintended consequences. So, you know, we do, we've spent a long time researching this data, looking at how it is, making sure that there aren't any issues that can happen. I think the reality is um, that um, it, it's not easy to consume this data. Um, you know, there, there isn't a consistent open banking framework in the United States. There are great vendors out there like MX who go out and pull this, whether it's through APIs or through other means, um, but it's still not 100% reliable across any of them. So, you know, I think what we've also noticed is that um, a lot of lenders, um, they can have multiple uses for using an aggregator, right? So they may also use them for income verification or for other aspects as well. So I think that what's really key, you know, I, is, in our case, we've built it so we can work with MX or any other aggregator, which I think is, is pretty important for us. Obviously, we work across multiple bureaus, but also a lender, what we hear from them is that if they, were, if they can use the same aggregator to do income verification, to do the deposit back into the person's account, if it's a personal loan and do this, then the consumer is gonna get a lot more, see a lot more value and be more willing to, to opt in. And I'm not sure, just as I began talking to you about this, I didn't even have a full appreciation for Vantage Score's role in thinking about cash flow data. Um, how far are you along that journey? And does it become a core part of Vantage Score of the future? Or how do you think about it? And I, I'm catching you off guard. No, not at all. This is, you know, for us, you know, um, for the time being, we're seeing actually two paths when it comes to our credit scoring strategy. One, which is the... Um, the traditional model, which is based um, on what we call generic scores, which can be calculated at any time. And we're obviously looking for 
more data and improved uh, approaches for machine learning and all things, and we're seeing great things there as well. But we have a second approach, or a second stream, which is around our consumer permission data. And so that's a different type of modeling. And again, we're building a consistent model for all three. We're in the point, uh, point now where we're piloting that with some very large lenders, and obviously with yourselves and, and the other bureaus, and we're seeing really terrific results. Um, I think that, um, so core part to our strategy is the answer to your question. We think it's the very starting point by using these types of information and that there'll be you know, more to come. And then in the future, I don't know if there will be the same segregation between consumer permissioned and non-consumer permission models. Right now, it's a very tactical one, right? If a consumer um, has to give the permission, it kind of has to be done in real time. Right? So if you're applying for the loan and you give this permission, then you kind of want to know if you're getting that loan or that credit card right then and there. And, and so you know, that, that's been an interesting challenge to, to address. We've, we're glad we've gotten there now. But uh, you know, I think in the future, maybe there'll be a point where this consumer permissioning is more easily done and where they can decide what goes on their credit files, what doesn't go on their credit files, who gets to see which information. So in that case, maybe it'll, it'll merge into one stream. But for now, two different streams, but very, very important to our strategy. We can take questions. There's a QR code on the screen. I, I think these might be from the last session. This is, yeah. <laughs> There's no Ashley up here. Um, do we have? Oh, here. Let's take the last one. Oh, there was one that was for us. <laughs> I saw it at the very bottom. Um, FCRA compliant. Can we get more lenders to use? No, I'm lost. I think it was something about can we get more lenders to use this data if they know it's FCRA compliant? And I think that's something that we've talked about, something TransUnion is focused on. The attributes that we're building are FCRA compliant. You can be comfortable using them. Same with Vantage Score. Um, anything? No, I think that's really, really important, going to the point of trust. All right, so consumers don't want decisions being made about them with potentially erroneous information, and yet alone not being able to have a means to get that corrected. And the answer to that is FCRA. So, you know, and I think when it comes to cash flow data, at least it's their own bank account. With other forms of data, it's, it, it can be different, right? So, but um, long story short, FCRA compliance is key. Yeah, it's like one of the big unlocks for this, I believe. And now we've lost the questions. <laughs> I think there was a question for me of, how, yeah, on how do we make it clear to consumers um, that their data is being used and how it's used and is, you know, alleviate any concerns on, regarding whether their data is ever going to be sold. Um, I can only speak for the company that I represent. Their data is never going to be sold to anyone. Um, and as far as how do we make them aware, um, we pride ourselves as having, uh, you know, a very open and customer friendly user experience and kind of not burying these details in font eight in a disclosure that no one reads. Um, so our plan is to do it through a series of very straightforward, um, you know, screens or interfaces that will explain in plain language on, you know, we're gonna use this data, are you okay with it? Do you wanna go ahead, yes or no? Yeah, and I think that it really does put the consumer in the driver's seat when you ask them to permission the data. They've got the full disclosure where it's going, what's happening with it, and they, they have to click yes and have to take a step to understand. Um, I'll just say, I think this works for small business as well. If you're looking at the consumer um, with small businesses, you're often underwriting the consumer, the proprietor of the business. Um, this would certainly work. I just think one thing to add for, you know, for the smaller businesses and lenders that are out there, they don't have the means and abilities to consume every form of alternative data out there and know how to incorporate it into their model. Whereas if there is an attribute or score that they can trust and they know and that is very easy to integrate into their processes, I think that's a big win. All right, well, thank you, everyone. Appreciate it.